What's up guys, Dog Polk here, and welcome back for another episode of Poker Hands, and today we're going to be taking a look at a hand that was recently played over at Live at the Bike. This hand caught my eye from seeing someone make a river move, you guys know I'm a fan of that around here, so let's go ahead and jump into the action. The minimum, but it does look that way. I, I thought you never bluffed too. It's tough to play time. seven eight suited when you buy in for you the min buy in <laughs> in every game. Yeah, the jungle like man with his line. Ten to one. Mike, he had the line. Oh. I did have the line. Oh my, that was a great line, Joe. What was the line I missed? I thought he never bluffed two one time. <laughs> that is the great line. I will tell you this, Jungle Man, I will secretly play like the kids when I can get away with it. The problem is you can't get away with it with the billionaires I play with. And I can't get away with it in the stream I played. So that forces my hand. Like I'm like him. Like he said he wants to play the best strategy and I was gonna tell him I was gonna tell him that I respect that. Like he, he wants to win and he's trying his Our hand begins with a variety of blinds in play that account for something around 100, 200 no limit hold'em. Action kicks off, flowing to Bill Klein, the cutoff who looks down at Jack-8 suited. This is a hand you're going to want to be mixing into your cutoff raise range from time to time. You can maybe get behind a fold every now and then. Essentially, this is a spot where you might want to look the players behind and make your decision based off of that. Now, when you have this many people in the blinds and straddles and everything like that, you probably want to play a little bit tighter, and I might look to let this go in some lineups, but Bill does decide to go ahead and raise. The action folds to Garrett in the small blind, and he looks down at king-queen offsuit. Now, in a traditional small blind, big blind game, maybe you could argue to make a call here some of the time, but with this many players behind and the fact that your odds are quite bad, Garrett only has $25 invested and has to call a $600 raise, well, in this situation, you're going, you're going to want to play three better fold. And I don't actually hate folding here a chunk of the time. One of the things you have to remember when there are straddles and multiple blinds is that there are more people still left in the pot behind you that are going to try and play their hands. So you have to proceed accordingly and try and be a little bit tighter. If you do decide to play, you're going to want to come in for a three bet, which Garrett does decide to make to $2,600. Everyone else gets out of the way and the action folds back over to Bill Klein, and now he has to decide what to do with his Jack-8 suited. Frankly, I don't really hate just folding. This is one of the worst hands you're going to be opening here in the cutoff, uh, and you are facing a raise that is pretty reasonable size. I actually really like this three bet size from Garrett. I think it's large enough to where some hands are certainly going to have to fold, and it puts a lot of hands in a tough spot. Now, in this situation, maybe once in a while you can call or make a move, but I do prefer fold. Klein decides, however, to go ahead and make the call, and let's take a flop. So sometimes I can be the maniac in a smaller game, and sometimes I have to be the nit. But you have to be able to do both, I think. Well, what if the best strategy okay. involves losing sometimes in the... Okay. In some games. The flop comes queen 10 10 with one spade. So Garrett flops top pair, or really two pair if you want to get technical about it, and Bill flops a gutter and a backdoor flush drop. I think here in Garrett's shoes, you're mainly going to want to bet the flop with a high C bet frequency. You're going to want to go for a very small size, and then that's going to put a variety of hands that Bill can have in tough situations. If you bet something like one fourth pot here, what's Bill going to do when he has a hand like ace nine of hearts? What's he going to do with a hand like pocket threes? What's he going to do with a hand like eight seven of spades or hearts? He's going to have to fold or make some very marginal floats with those hands, and it forces your opponent to have to defend their range appropriately. If you are going to have some checks, though, I really don't mind King-Queen being in there. By checking a hand like King-Queen, you got some hands you can believe in when you face a little bit of heat, and Garrett does decide to go ahead and make the check. Over to Bill. These are some of my favorite hands I like to bet the flop with. We have some equity. We're not really upset if we get check raised, although it's unlikely on a paired flop like this. But basically, this hand has equity to improve to a hand that's going to be able to value bet. And additionally, we don't hate folding to raise. And that's really the type of hand you want to look to bluff with on the flop. You have outs, but you don't have showdown value, and you're not really upset if you get raised off your hand. Anyway, Bill does decide to check it back, and you know, if you've been watching this show for much over the last, I don't know, three years, you probably noticed something that's been very consistent. When people are playing live poker, they tend to call more and check more and be typically more passive, so that's something you might want to try and take advantage of when you're playing at the live felt. Anyway, before we take the turn, I want to let everyone know you have just two days left to take advantage of a $200 discount on Nick Petrangelo's High Stakes MDT Sessions. The course features 25 hours of Nick essentially breaking down the play that he has at high stakes, winning some tournaments, getting some deep runs in tournaments, and walking you through how he legitimately played in these actual events. If you're interested in taking your tournament game to the next level, you can check it out in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and take a turn. I will never intentionally lose, ever. Yeah, Not I my style. 
just can't do it all. Always, but I always get invited back because when they put bad beats on me, I whine, or when I get unlucky, for some reason, people want to be with me. Oh, you don't intentionally lose when we're well, playing yeah. these smaller games. No, it's important to uh, you're purposely trying to cater lose to your, your uh, Bill picks also, up a flush you know, draw. To cater, basically, Bill does have a straight draw flush draw. The turn comes to the five of spades, which is an interesting card. Now Bill has improved to a flush draw to go along with his gut shot, but Garrett's still in the lead with his top pair. Garrett decides now is the time to bet, and I definitely like that decision. If it does go check, check, you're going to want to turn up the heat on the turn, and you might want to every now and then work in some bluffs here on the turn as well. When the action goes check, check, Garrett should not be afraid of three of a kind anymore. That's not a very likely hand. If Bill had trips, he'd probably bet the flop himself. So he's almost always going to be here good here on the turn, unless Bill had a hand like pocket fives, or maybe the occasional slow paid strong hand. Garrett decides to go for the half pot bet, which makes a lot of sense. And now the action's over to Bill. With his flush drawn gutter, I think the main play here is to call. You can't represent many good hands by raising. I will say I think every now and then working in a raise to try and represent that you turned a full house or did trap something on the flop, I think that could be a good move. But you certainly want to mainly call here because you don't have a lot of value bets. Anyway, Bill does decide to make the call and let's take a river. What do you think? Be fun or whatever. But that's part of my authenticity. Though, I don't know. Is I that, um, know. As people know, I'm not a hustler. Garrett with top two up. pair. You know, and I'm always going to try my hardest. I'm yeah, like a warrior, man. Like it, you know, Look, Mike's like talking it. through my whole speech again. It's unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. Mike, why don't you say some stuff? Go ahead. No, I just keep forgetting. When you're done, doesn't like speeches. I keep forgetting that it, everybody hears. So, like, when you guys are talking, oh, whatever, and I just like. Garrett with a tiny bet of 2,500, a quarter pop bet. Very, what's the word I'm looking for? Quiet. No, I'll just. Very attentive to this. Oh, attentive. Sorry. Pay attention to this for the rest of the time. Oh, and it's going to induce Bill Klein. Nine thousand. Bill would just jack high. Nine thousand to go, and Garrett with the smile. No, no, seriously, one second, please. I'm going to get chicken. Seriously. Oh man. Or get food. Uh, where the? Oh, it's here. I got you. Oh. Okay. The river comes a king, which is certainly an interesting card. Now, ace jack is improved to a straight. Jack nine's improved to a straight. And of course, if Bill had a hand like ace king or king jack, he's also improved to top pair. But Garrett beats some of those hands. Garrett has top two, so he is ahead of those kings in his opponent's range. At this point, I think in, in Garrett's shoes, I don't really mind a small bet or a check. I think they both have some logic. If you bet very small here, something like one third, one fourth pot, well, your opponent's going to have to call you with their queen a lot of the time if they do have one. And if you improve the king, he's certainly calling as well. If you check in this situation, some of those hands might just try and take their showdown value and check back. So a small bet does extract some value. However, checking is a pretty legitimate option too. Your opponent might take a stab when they have a hand like, I'm just making something up here. I'll say jack eight of spades. And they also might try to value bet a king on the river themselves. So you might end up making more money versus some of those hands. It's a pretty tough situation. I don't really mind choosing either one. Garrett does decide to go for the small bet size, 2,800 bucks into a pot of roughly 12,000. So a very small bet here on the river. And now the action's over to Bill. Typically speaking, a good general poker rule is when you have one of the worst hands you can possibly have and your opponent bets the river, it's usually fine to just fold. And I think this spot's another good example of that. Realistically, I think Bill wants to bluff raise here when he has a hand like some kind of pair that blocks full houses. Maybe if Bill could have a hand like 6-5 of hearts, I don't mind that one as much as this hand specifically because then you do block your opponent from having a hand like pocket fives and you also don't block your opponent from having some kind of missed spade draw. You are going to want to bluff raise here some though. You're going to have ace jack here some of the time. You also could have jack nine here some of the time. You could have an occasional trapped hand on the flop and turn. So you're going to want to mix in some raises. I think I would just prefer to pick a little bit of a different hand. But Bill sends his weakness, and it's possible that he thinks this small bet from the, on the river by Garrett is a hand that's just a very marginal, marginal value bet that isn't looking to take any heat. So he decides to go ahead and bump it up to 9,000 bucks. Back over to Garrett. And you want a move I would love to see here from Garrett. These guys are playing reasonably deep. I would love to see him just go all in with this hand some of the time. He can definitely have hands like kings or queens um, that would play it in a similar fashion. And his opponent is really saying that they have a straight. There's no hands that Bill's going to have here that are extremely excited to get all the money in. So by jamming here with a hand like King Queen, you block maybe some, some potential boats that are unlikely but, but, but possible. And additionally, you can balance it out by jamming with some of your full houses. 
However, that's a move you don't want to do too often because, frankly, you don't have top boat or second nut boat here very frequently. You do have them, but not all that often. So sometimes you're going to have to not raise. And the question is, do we like to call with this hand? And frankly, it's a little bit close. The main value bet your opponent is saying they have is realistically ace-jack. So from that perspective, I like a hand like aces a lot more than a hand like king-queen because your opponent isn't saying they have a full house. They're saying they have a straight. On the other hand, you have to think about what kinds of hands are you checking the flop with? Is, is Garrett going to trap hands like aces? Well, it's possible he doesn't have a lot of those hands in his range anyway, in which case he's probably going to have to call some king-queen. And this really, it, it highlights how important it is on the flop to think about where you're putting all of your hands. How are you playing other good hands that you can have? Because that might influence your decision you want to make on the river. With all that stuff out of the way, the other thing here that's important to note is that this is a fairly small raise. Garrett only has to call roughly $6,500 here to win a pot of $23,000 or twenty what would be 29,000. So he's getting fairly good odds here. He really only needs to be good something like a quarter of the time to make this a profitable call. A lot of things to consider here, but at the end of the day, will Garrett make the call or will Bill find a way for his bluff to get through? Bill does have blockers to jack nine and ace jack, which would be the straight. Garrett has to risk 6,500 to win a pot of 2,300, which means Garrett has to only be good here one in four times. Is Garrett good here 20% of the time? You okay? Bill has officially put Garrett's brain in the blender here. Looks like Garrett's going to use a time uh, chip or two do they have fruit over in this there? process. Yep. Sweet! Do Where's the fruit, man? Yeah, they do. There was, at least. Wait, some fruit. Oh, there's no berries, bro. There's there fruit, but there's no, there's no, uh, there's no blueberries. Uh, there were strawberries. I like the blueberries and the raspberries, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not into the mixed berries. Bill Klein. Oh, and Bill Klein gets it through. Oh, and, and he was Klein shows the bluff. Oh, shit. oh wow. my God! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> what a bluff! Oh my God! Said it once, said it a million times. They need to nerf bluffing. It's just too strong in this patch. Thanks for joining me here today for Poker Hands. And if you're interested in learning more about Nick's high stakes MDT sessions course, I'll put a link in the description below.